Two words. Check light. I've connected the scan tool as well, so I've achieved communication with the scan tool and a check light and two power wires. So that's one, two, three, four, five to have an engine check light and one wire for a scan tool. Simple answer. Get it, guys. Calvin from the cartoon company. Help. My ECU doesn't have a check light. Well, not my ECU, but I was having a bit of a chat with someone online the other day. And he just uh, sparked a bit of an interest in my mind. And I thought I'd do a little bit of research, have it on camera. So we're going to look today at a 1UZ VVTi computer. So the VVTi computers look like this. So whether it's a Crown or a Celsius or the one that's not there, which is a later model Crown, the 151 Crown or a 171 Crown or 170 series Crown, they all physically look like this. The header plugs are the same, but there are slight differences in the pinouts. Pinout between a 151 and a UCF20, very similar. The 170s are different. 3UZ, they look way different, so they look like that. So that's a 3UZ ECU and several different versions of that as well, whether it's 5-speed or a 6-speed. We're going to be working on this one today. This is a, an immobilized ECU. This is a non-immobilized ECU, factory. So we're gonna work on this immobilized one just to prove that it's not the immobilizer that's stopping the check light. So I'm going to power this up. So we have here, the check light is here. Two minute battery here. And even though I do say fuses are for pussies, I have got a fuse on it. This is an earth. This is an engine, main earths are here and here, and this earth is connected, will be connected, there we go, that one there, so there is an earth, one running to the back of the engine, that is connected to that point there. This is my test setup, and it's been modified many, many times and gotten uglier and uglier over the years, but it's how I power them up. Now I'll often be asked, um, can I wire it like this, can I set it up like this? And often my answer is I don't know because that's not how I do it. I have a system that works. It's very, very close to the way that Toyota did it. And funny enough, Toyota kind of knew what they were doing. And the Toyotas run. So it makes sense to do it as close to the correct way as possible. So this loom I've got in front of me is the correct way of doing it. So we're going to start with that, I'll power it up. And we'll have a bit of a look. This is my ignition. I'm going to give it ignition here. We can hear the throttle body is humming. The throttle works. And now it really hums. So that is working. Oh, and we have a check light right there. So I'm going to unplug, now I'm going to leave the engine powered up, I'm going to unplug the little middle pin plug, that stopped the throttle, the clutch wiring is in that one. But I still have a check light, so I'm going to unplug this next one, check light is still present. I'm quite certain if I unplug this last one, that will... So there's two main earths in this end plug. So when I'm testing on the bench, I often don't have an engine to hook up. So I just use my earth. So I've got a set of earths here. And normally I run four earths in, but today I'm just going to run those two earths in that corner. Now on a side note, I do have, and you can get all the factory plugs for these ECUs. On this one below, there, 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 that one. All right, so that's all the, that you can get the new connectors. And we're working with the top ECU. I've, repla I've removed all of the engine plug, loom plugs, and I've only got this earth. Now this earth is coming through to this point here. 
and I'm quite certain I can unplug my engine. There's the engine loom disconnected, and we still have a check light. Must remember that this piece here is still wired correctly, but I think I can still I can unplug this wire. And we still have an engine check light. Of course, if I unplug this one, there's the check light wire. That light will definitely go out. So the next thing we're going to do is substi start substituting wires into those plugs. I thought I had a plug out. There's a plug. So we unplug that. That is the correct plug. Now for removing the pins out of these ECUs, I've got this little set here, DAT equipment, different size pin poppers. If you don't have a cool kit like that, then you modify a test light or whatever pokey stick you've got, screwdriver. It has to be quite thin and reasonably parallel. This is one I used for earlier ECUs. You just get onto the grinder, grind it up, quite small, and away we go. So there's a little lock at the bottom that pops out, and then there's a little lock tab inside the plug as well. I think what I will do here, is we'll get some different colored wire, and I'll run a check light just before I unplug the ECU and go to individual uh, wiring, I'm just going to get some communications with the scan tool to prove that we can get in. So we look in here, we can see, if I can get it to focus, it does say that the engine check light is on. We'll also just have a look at a mobiliser, and I'll prove that this is, just to confirm that this is an immobilised ECU. And that isn't, the immobiliser in no way affects the ability of the ECU. Here we go, it says, no communication in immobiliser system, code B2796. Still displaying a check light, I've unplugged it, but, so the, the scan tool still talks to this ECU. Pop that out for now. We'll unplug this one. And I'll just remove this power. So this whole system is removed, except for that brown wire, which is our earth, to this point here. This is an LED, so we will confirm that it works. So there's my check light. Do the twist and tie. I've got an earth and a check light. That's all that's going to the ECU. And there's no check light, which is funny enough. That's how I'd expect. I'll pop this out and I made up some pink wires that we're going to feed some voltage into this ECU. We'll put power there. The two main power wires. And we'll power those two up as well. At which point, this ECU generates a check light. So I have four, I have five wires. I have the two main earths, that wire, and those two power wires, and that ECU generates a check light. And that's all we need for a 1UZ VVTi, this is a 20 series, to generate a check light. This ECU is immobilized, but we still get that check light. And a question too that I, I was thinking, can I get communications with the scan tool? So I've got an OBD2 scan tool plug here. We'll feed the scan tool connector connection into the ECU. So on the scan tool connector, four and five are earthed, 
7 is going into the ECU. My brown wire is going to be my earth today. And my red blue today is my power wire. That is to the scan tool only. Okay, this will power the scan tool. We've got a check engine check light. I was a little bit reluctant just to say this is all you need for a check light. So I did uh, I did a bit of testing. As you can see here, this is the test and it it was pretty much what I expected that we only need the main ECU to power up. I'm actually interested to see if I powered that plug up there, whether I could actually make an engine run. But that might have to wait for another day, because I do have some real work to do. There is a Hilux behind us that's getting a motor, and I didn't get it done last week because I was doing a sprint boat, so I'd like to get into that job. So I'm going into the powertrain control module again, It tells me it's reading the information. And it's got some diagnostic trouble codes. It's checking the diagnostic trouble codes. So I've got, and reason enough, not all the codes, throttle position sensor circuit, accelerator position circuit, and no communication with the immobilizer. I have got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six wires connected to that ECU. I'm still getting an engine check light, and I'm still getting communication with my scanner. It should actually have a whole lot more codes, so wired like this, we're not getting any gearbox codes, we're not getting the, the temperature sensor codes, we're not getting the ignition circuit codes, so there's a whole lot that are missing. And we'll have a look at that immobilizer again to show that this is an immobilized ECU. And no communication with an immobilizer system. The immobilized ECU, six wires connected, scan tool, and check light is working. So that's pretty interesting. Well, it is for me. I've just swapped over to the 151 Crown ECU, and I've had a terrible thought. I wonder if I can remove one of those power wires. There it is. I probably should be careful because that is in fact connected. So there we've got that check light. One power wire, a check light, a scan tool, and two earths. Makes you think, wonder if I can remove one of those earths. Another earth gone. Here we go. Okay. Uh, one power, one earth, one check light, and scan tool. Reading system information. Please wait. I'm waiting. DTC read. Oh, I've only got two check codes now. Throttle position sensor circuit and accelerator position. This is the non immobilized ECU, so I can get into to EMO and it tells me there's no trouble codes. I can still get check codes, but there's only two of them when it's powered up like this. Of course, there's only two because there's no EMO in this ECU, and that was the third one. So there you go. In fact, one earth, one power, and a check light is generated. I had to just remove that adapter and I've run an earth. Here it is, black wire, around my earth point. This is how not to do wiring. Uh, anyway, so there we have uh, an earth, check light, a power wire, and that's for the scan tool. So these three generate a check light. So that's a really simple way of testing your ECU. It does actually generate a check light. There's nothing else connected. There's no tricks here. See, there we go, no tricks. 
scan tool, earth out of the ECU, and a power. Here's my power going here. For those of you that are wiring one UZ DVTi, I'm gonna do a small sales pitch. Or any of the one UZs, I do sell instructions on how to wire these, and it is simple. It is the basics of wiring them. Connect this wire to this wire to this wire. Just like you've seen here, uh, really, really simple ways to do it, and to do it properly. It'd be interesting to see if I can make an engine run on how few wires, but I don't have enough time to do that today. That might be a subject of another video, and I can show you how few wires you need to connect to make an engine run. It's not proper, but it's a good way to fire them up on the stand before you wire them incorrectly into the vehicle. Wire them incorrectly to the vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. That, that's wire them in to the vehicle correctly, not incorrectly into the vehicle. So I hope that's been uh, a little bit helpful and a little bit more insightful on, on the little that you need to power up and check an ECU. Uh, sometimes you can use uh, like OBD2 dongles. I've had some really good successes with it, uh, but also I don't trust them all. So I always check them onto a, a known system that I know will communicate and work. Even the same model will not work with different batches sometimes. So we'll talk to you again. Catch you later.